This is really heartbreaking. You know, Hamas could release the hostages now. It could have released them yesterday. It could have released them on October 7th. And every moment that it chooses not to release those vulnerable little children is a moment that it continues to psychologically terrorize these children's families. You know, we're hoping that at least tomorrow we can start to bring to an end the nightmare of some of these most vulnerable hostages, the over 30 children Hamas has been holding incommunicado. They've been holding them in the dark and they've been keeping their families in the dark. Their families know nothing about their condition, physically, mentally, emotionally. You know, maybe even worse, these children don't know what has happened to their families, what happened to them on October 7th. This is little Abigail. She's three. She was orphaned. Does this little girl who's been held in a tunnel for 50 days know she's an orphan? What does it mean for a three-year-old girl to know that she is an orphan? Um, this hostage crisis is intensely personal for everyone in Israel. We're a small country. Everyone knows someone who has had someone stolen from them. And we're hoping to begin bringing back our stolen children, bring back those hostages. And we're committed to the pledge that we will bring all of them back and there will be no one left behind. What caused the delay? It appears that Hamas is determined to psychologically terrorize us. Hamas could have released these hostages long ago. It didn't have to take them hostage in the first place. Uh, you know, these children have yeah, yeah, the most horrific that, circumstances. What caused the delay? Why are we not seeing them today? What's caused the at delay? The moment, at the moment, the talks are ongoing, and this is a very sensitive situation, so I have to be careful what I say. And I hope that we can begin to release the first batch tomorrow and get them out of the, the Hamas-held dungeons that they've been held in. Suggestion is that Hamas didn't sign the paperwork. Is it as simple as that? Look, this is a terrorist organization. It's not exactly uh, an organization uh, whose word is a uh, law or writ and, and we need its signature on paper. But again, Hamas can decide whenever it wants to release all 240 of those hostages, the children and the elderly, the men and the women, the soldiers and the civilians. It is for Hamas to decide it can release them. And we will continue putting military pressure on Hamas so that it releases all of our hostages and we bring all of them home and leave no one left behind. Why are you confident? Uh, that the hostages, the children, will be released by tomorrow morning? We are hopeful. We are continuing to apply military pressure on Hamas to release all of our hostages. It hasn't suddenly developed a conscience. It hasn't suddenly developed a sense of morality. The terrorists who burned, butchered and beheaded people on October 7th haven't suddenly realised it's evil to hold a two-year-old so girl hostage So you're hopeful but not confident? We are hopeful. OK, but not confident at this stage. Um, you say that you want, uh, you're hopeful that all of the hostages will be released um, eventually by Hamas. What happens then in Gaza? We will continue with our campaign to destroy Hamas in response to the October 7th massacre. This is the terror group that on October 7th abducted little children from their beds. And if we leave them in power, it will do it again. Because Hamas has told us it wants to perpetrate another and another and another October 7th massacre. And this war has to end with the end of Hamas. Because if we leave it free, we will leave it emboldened. And we will be in this same story in six months' time when Hamas attacks us again. Okay. So we're fighting to bring back our stolen children and to make sure that the terrorists of October 7th can never steal them again. Mr Levy, you say that once the hostages are all released, you are basically going to pound... Hamas into um, to, to obliterate them. So what is their incentive to release all the hostages? At the moment, Hamas is coming under unrelenting military pressure and we've had it begging for a breather because it's getting clobbered. After the first 50 hostages are released, Hamas will have a decision to make. For every 10 additional hostages it releases, we are willing to agree to another one-day pause in the fighting. And if Hamas wants that time uh, for another breather, they can release those hostages and we'll continue putting pressure on Hamas until we get everyone home. We are committed. That is our obligation as a state. It goes to the deepest values of the Jewish people, releasing people from captivity. We're determined to bring them all home. We won't leave any of them behind. I was speaking to a hostage negotiator this morning. He made the comparison between the 50 hostages, hostages that Hamas has promised, um, promised to release as opposed to the 150 prisoners that are Palestinians that Israel has said that it will release. And he made the comp comparison between the numbers and the fact that does Israel not think that Palestinian lives are valued as highly as Israeli lives? That is an astonishing accusation. If we could release one prisoner for every one hostage, we would obviously do that. We're operating in horrific circumstances. We're not choosing 
to release these prisoners who have blood on their hands. We are talking about people who have been convicted of stabbing and shooting attacks. Notice the question of proportionality doesn't interest Palestinian supporters when they are able to get more of their prisoners out. But really, it is outrageous to suggest that the fact that we are willing to release prisoners who are convicted of terrorism offenses, more of them than we are getting our own innocent children back, somehow suggests that we don't care about Palestinian lives. Really, that's a disgusting accusation. Will um, President Netanyahu's political career survive this war? The Prime Minister has been very clear. People are right to ask very difficult questions. And when this war is over, everyone is going to have to give the Israeli public answers. Everyone will be held accountable. Everyone is going to have to uh, take responsibility. And after this war is over, after we win, after we destroy Hamas, we can open everything up. And he will give the Israeli people those answers. And we will interrogate and understand exactly how this happened and how we can make sure this never happens again. OK, I'm not sure if I said President Netanyahu then, if I did, my apologies. Prime Minister. Uh, he is the Prime Minister, of course, at the moment. For how much longer? We don't know at this stage. What about aid? What are we going to do about aid? Uh, we're talking to the International Red Cross in just a, a few moments' time. We need to get aid into Gaza. Absolutely. It's very important that humanitarian aid reach the people of Gaza who need it and to make sure that Hamas can't steal it. Uh, our position has been very consistent from the beginning. We want as much food, water, medicine and shelter going to the people of Gaza in a way that makes sure Hamas can't exploit those trucks in order to rearm and refuel. We've more than doubled our capabilities to inspect those trucks to make sure Hamas isn't exploiting them to uh, smuggle in weapons. Uh, we know there have been logistical constraints on the part of the international agencies in Gaza that are supposed to receive that aid. But our position from the very beginning is we want to see that aid reach the people of Gaza, as much of it uh, as possible, and we're ready to inspect that aid and facilitate that. OK, we must leave it there. Um, I hope that we might be able to speak again tomorrow with better news for those little ones that have been Let's held, hope. as you Let's said, pray. Thank you, Kay. for 50 days. Thank you. Thank you.